she stopped uh, on the um, dissemination work that's um, very important for the archives of Europe. And um, I'm just here to actually give you a reason to pick up this wonderful uh, handbook that you all got um, and uh, take a look at it because I will talk about a few aspects that are mentioned in here. Um, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to just uh, raise your hand. I forgot to take my glasses, so you really have to like raise your hand to stand up um, and make yourself uh, visible to me, please. All right, so the um, so-called Dissemination Service Center is something that uh, we, uh, from Work Package 7, uh, would like to offer to you as country managers, so to speak, um, to be like your backbone in those kind of things. Um, we have contact persons, people you can always uh, ask questions if you have, uh, um, you know, any issues with uh, dissemination. Um, so there's always somebody you can talk to and um, get get information. Um, let's see. The points I would like to touch upon are advertising material, conferences, workshops. Uh, the featured exhibition, uh, the working title right now is The Object of the Month, which um, I hope everybody has already heard of. Can I see a few hands who, let's say, has not? Okay, I like that one. Um, we're going to talk about the dissemination channels, um, the Country Managers Forum, which um, Lucille has already mentioned, um, which I would like to show to you if the internet works, so let's keep our fingers crossed and access to dissemination material. Um, the first one, the advertising material. So, if you look at this book um, and go to page 12, you can actually see that all the texts that are being produced on the Archives Portal Europe are originally going to be in English. But if you would like to have them in your own national um, language in order to do better, let's say, dissemination work. Um, there are, there's, a, there's a system we would like to propose to you how we could go about it. So, um, if a translation has to be made, let's say flyers, um, the country manager uh, would have to make these translations into their own language, or of course uh, the country manager is free to appoint somebody who can do that. Um, These translated texts then would be sent back to us, uh, Work Package 7. We would put those texts into the flyers. And um, then there are two different ways of how these flyers could be printed. Um, either we could print the flyers and send, send them to you, or um, you get the, the finished file um, sent to you if you print them yourselves if you have some, you know, good connections to uh, any printing companies. Um, so I was talking about the flyers already. We, um, has anybody seen the archives for the flyers yet? By show of hands? A few? Yes, I knew, I knew you were going to show your hands. That's good. Um, it's going to be a regular C-fold. Does, does everybody know what a C-fold is? Um, so it's like an A4 that's going to be folded like this and um, so you have to work your, let's say, three-dimensional thinking a little bit right now because this is the front of the Apex flyer uh, with the text that then would have to be or could be translated. This would be the front side and this would be the back side. So there's three flyers in total, that would be with number one. Number two would be the Archives for the Europe flyer, which is um, color-coded in pink. Um, this is again a C-fold flyer, front side and the back side, which, well this uh, contains basic information on um, the Archives for the Europe, like what is the Archives for the Europe, what kind of information is available, who's participating, just uh, very general. Then there would be the third file, which is on the content provide for the content providers. 
Um, this color is a little off actually, it's, um, it's more like an orange. Um, and this file <coughs> includes the steps on how to join the Archives Part of Europe. We also have that text uh, on the web page. Um, I've already gotten a few translations from some of you, but as we, we changed the text a little bit, so um, in the next one or two weeks we'll be sending out um, the, the new English text files for you and then you can start uh, either make adaptions if you've already translated it or start translating it if you would like to have these flyers in your own language. So this would be the front side, this would be the back side, um, just on how to join the portal. Um, next one, conferences and workshops. Um, let's go back to our book. Um, next page. Um, of course, it's always uh, would be very um, beneficial to the project and to make this project known to organize conferences and workshops, which um, could be one of your tasks as a country manager to organize those uh, conferences. And again, we as Work Package 7, we would um, offer you the would offer you help with those workshops. So if you need, um, you know, if you need invitations, if you need like layout for inter invitations, uh, drafts for programs, posters, whatever, you can always contact us. Um, you'll find the contact person um, in your handbook. Um, we could, for example, provide uh, professional speakers. We could um, uh, take part in those workshops and uh, conferences. And of course, we uh, would announce these events via our several uh, dissemination, dissemination channels, um, um, about which I'm going to talk a little more um, in a bit. Uh, what else is important about conferences and workshops? Um, it's basically up. I mean, it's up to you how you want to um, organize those. In the handbook we have um, an example of how you could organize one, um, but um, I mean, obviously this is, uh, this is up to you and because you know your audience best and know how, what kind of workshop or conference uh, would work best within your context. So then the next point is going to be the featured exhibition with the working title Object of the Month, um, which I'm sure everybody has already received at least one or two emails with information on that. And we have actually, um, so this is going to be a feature on the Archives of Europe where every institution, every, every archive gets the chance to um, present one of their holdings and actually display it on this international um, platform and um, um, it's kind of like a like a showroom of, of what we have in your archive and we have um, we did come up with different themes we call them so this is the schedule um, from 2013 to 2015 um, these themes um, no, you don't have to jot it down or anything because we'll be sending out an email with all the exact information. Um, those are themes that um, every one of you can think about whether they have some material that would fit to one of those themes that they could provide. Um, I, we came up with a, it's just a mock-up of the archive spot, uh, of the um, um, featured exhibition, what it's going to could look like um, on the on the portal. So this would be on the starting page. Um, it would be the object of the month, and um, we would have an image of the digitized object that you have in your archive. Um, and um, we would have the theme and a brief description um, of the theme. You could then navigate to. Um, um, that you could then navigate um, into, into different directions. Um, we have the theme which is the winter laws of the Baltics, for example, um, with a brief description, 
and then this would be uh, like um, a um, what do you call it? A contribution from um, I don't know Finland with Finnish maps that go with the theme, and then you could navigate to previous topics. You could navigate to um, um, all kinds of um, I can I can read it on this one, but um, so th there are different ways to navigate through these featured exhibitions. Um, this is just um, a quick impression of or a detailed view on um, a specific contribution, which are in this case the Finnish maps. Um, so there could be more than, uh, you as an archive could provide more than one image, so there could be several images, and we're also thinking about some sort of functionality of like click and zoom, so um, that you, that um, these images, these digital objects really are um, in the focus and um, can be can be seen. Um, yes. So these object of the month uh, or this featured exhibition. Um, what what is it? What we would need from you from the archive? We would need, of course, uh, the digital object. Um, preferably something that's already available in the archives portal in Europe. If not, it's not a problem at all. Um, but something that's going to be available soon, as soon as you've uploaded your um, data. Uh, a brief description of uh, the, um, uh, the, the object that you uh, would like to provide. And um, that's, I think, about it. I mean, we will send out the specifics in an email so you have it all uh, on one, in one place um, pretty soon anyways. But just for now, you can start thinking about, you know, what you as an archive could uh, possibly contribute. So I was already talking about the dissemination channels and we've heard a couple today already. Um, let's see, what kind of dissemination channels uh, do we have? What could we use? Ooh, not all at once. Go ahead, please somebody start. I can give you a head start if you like. The website, we have the news. The news uh, section on the website, that would be one of our dissemination channels. What else? Where else have you seen the APEX or the Archives Port of Europe? Facebook, Facebook. Yes, exactly. We have a Facebook page, so everybody who has not checked it out yet, um, go ahead and do it. We have a Twitter, uh, where, um, uh, which we use. We have the news bulletin. So our first publish, uh, pub, um, public news bulletin was sent out shortly after the release of the 8.1.1. Um, has everybody gotten it actually? Yes. And um, so this is something yeah, that you actively have to subscribe to. And this one will be sent out mm, like every three to four months. Um, um, Yes, every three to four months with all the um, relevant news for the public on what's, you know, what's happening, what's going on in the archives part of Europe. Um, so those, and of course the print media, like the flyers, we're also working on a poster, um, which could be uh, used internationally um, and uh, would make a nice addition to those dissemination channels. Um, so then we've also uh, already talked about the country managers forum. And why do you think would we have a forum for country managers? Well, the answer is simple. Coordination. coordination. Yes, it's coordination. And it's also because we thought it might be, well, it depends on you. It's a suggestion from our side. We thought it might be very convenient to have a forum where you as country managers could start discussing certain issues and where everybody would have access to and um, can discuss topics, make suggestions, and just to have some sort of communication channel. Um, which we have found quite convenient um, because it's centralized and, and everybody, you know, is free to access it and, uh, and, and, and work with it. Um, so we've set up this forum and we have provided a few initial threads which are again only a suggestion and every one of you is of course invited to start their own threads, to start their own discussions. Um, if the internet works, I would like to have a look at it and show it to you. Um, let's see 
what it does. Here we go. Okay. So you go to the partners area, and then you see forum. Has, has everybody been logged into the project website and seen this partner area? Are you familiar with that? Okay, so um, as soon as you're logged in, you see that tab partner area, where you go to forum. Or we actually have the forum country managers down there. Go back on the partner area. The partner area. And then forum country managers. Yes, scroll down a little bit. So these are the threads that we've put up. Those are the topics that you know, we thought you might like to discuss, like information on country-specific archive landscape, uh, support for country provider, uh, content providers. Um, so as you, as you can see, nobody, nobody has used it yet. Um, no topics, no replies. Um, and it's quite simple to use because um, you can subscribe to those threads. So every time somebody posts something into this forum, you get an email notification into your email account telling you what's going on in the forum and then you can go there and reply. The, um, the detailed description on how to do that is, of course, where else? In your handbook, okay? Um, I don't want to go too much into detail with this, um, because, yeah, we can, oh, oh, we can, um, actually, I don't know, do you find, do you find it useful to have that sort of tool? Um, we'll, we'll see how many of you use it and um, how, how far we can, uh, you know, go into detail uh, or elaborate on that one. Um, other than that, um, that's pretty much it from my side. Um, yes, I would like to once again uh, show off this. I really like this one from Alta, this uh, book you did. Um, we've also already published it uh, also on the, on the Facebook page. So every time you start you know, getting active and doing something like that, let us from uh, Work Package 7 know so we can, you know, so we can announce it and we can say, you know, we have information in uh, in Maltese, is that how you say it? Yes. Available. For example, we already have, um, after the um, 8.1.1 was launched, um, Wim started a blog in Dutch uh, on specific Archives for the Europe topics. So we were able to post that and say, you know, there's a community uh, discussing the Archives for the Europe in Dutch. Also from Iceland, um, I got a notification. Where's our colleague from Iceland? Yes, right over there. Yeah, and um, so there's information on the portal in Iceland, which I think um, is really nice to let users know that you know this is something um, very dynamic and it's available in different languages, and um, I think that that definitely sparks uh, some interest. All right. Uh, last but not least, um, I would like everyone to have a close look at the folder that you got handed at the beginning of today because there's a paper in there and it says call for papers. Has everybody noticed this call for papers? This should not be the first time you see it because we've sent it around by email too. Um, so what is it referring to? It's referring to um, our APEX conference we're going to have in Dublin in June. Um, and it's called Building Infrastructures for Archives in a Digital World. I'm not going to read out what, what's on the paper. Um, actually, maybe again, by show of hands, who has not heard about the conference? All right, that's very good. So, but this is again, um, this call for papers. Um, this might be maybe one of your <coughs> first tasks as a country manager. Make sure you distribute this call for paper to your colleagues. Um, tell them to, you know, get moving and maybe start writing down a proposal. We have all sorts of um, different topics on there, so it covers actually 
quite a wide range of um, different aspects and deadline is February 17th so it's not too far away but it's getting closer um, so I don't know let's see uh, which country manager manages to get the most politics in. Thank you very much.
So this this is uh, indicated in the Contaya Content Provider Agreement. Content Provider Agreement. We do not uh, display, we do not provide the data uh, to third party to anybody. Uh, uh, we're not looking at it, make it simple. So we don't give the data. Uh, yet yeah, people still get the data. Yes, but it's, it's uh, indicated, if I'm not mistaken, in the terms of use of the portal. That you're not allowed to do what you want with the, uh, with the data. You can reuse them for uh, your own personal uh, searches, for personal uh, activities, things like this. Uh, but uh, you have to, uh, to precise uh, the source of uh, where, where it comes from, and you don't have the right to take it if you're a friend of the company and if you want to reuse it, to reuse it in a professional way. So, I'm slightly unclear. Is, is there a license? No. There, there isn't a license at all. No. No. There, there are any plans for it. Um, there, there are no plans at the moment. Um, and uh, let's put it this way we, we haven't decided to say, okay, we are going with that specific license for all the content that is, or all the data that is in your portfolio. So it's more or less um, up to the content provider. So if, if they have their data under specific license, then we would take care of showing this information as well as the data. Uh, but from the same point of view, we haven't set up a specific license yet that we want to go with. So you're not really going down the route of providing an API or anything like that? You're, it's, it's not really about opening up the data in that way? At the moment, we, we, we're not up to that point. Okay. We, we're, we're too young with this. <laughs> <laughs> Things that go wrong in your head at the moment or work during the day. Remember what Gerrit said, there are no silly questions that just seem answers. Yeah, so feel free to, <coughs> to ask everything you want. Is it not clear? Yeah, but I realize that we, it's, you've been uh, problems with a lot of information, <laughs> and maybe it's too much, and probably we learn. Uh, not up, not up in some yes. uh, I have a question about the archive landscape. Uh, the archive landscape. Uh, should we fill the archive landscape to all those uh, institutions that uh, are yet supplied the area? <coughs> On one hand, you actually could already prepare the archive landscape with groups and naming the institutions as Lucille will show you briefly in her um, um, part. But um, as long as there isn't um, information on the institution edit or um, actually data edit from these institutions that will <coughs> all show up in the portal. So you could actually prepare everything in the back end. Uh, without it having a um, real effect at the moment. You can't see them. Yes. And as soon as, as you then start to, to distribute the institution manager account and the institution start to provide their information, then this will show up. So you could also say, okay, for an institution that is not yet ready with their data, then they could already be presented with the information about their institution. So you would have that in the directory section and you would have the contact details, etc. And once they start to also provide the data, they will be eligible in the above search and actually being able to, to uh, search and find the data. Otherwise, if there are no questions or remarks at the moment, just keep this in mind for tomorrow when uh, perhaps during the sessions and there tomorrow uh, you can come back to it and uh, we'll see when we actually have the things 
more ancient than I suppose it would be more modest, you know. Yeah. And so if you, if you don't have any uh, questions or regarding the health of the people, just see to what is next. Uh, so I mean, I let's keep moving again, but uh, the, the idea is to, to know what we are. Uh, what we should be doing in the next, well, what are our next steps um, uh, from our side as well as from your side? So, for this one, I have some comments and some requests too. Uh, so, for instance, just to, to follow, and follow from uh, Martin and Marx uh, what you could do for those who are not, uh, who did not uh, yet do this. Uh, you can create your other landscape uh, within the portal and you can uh, add some image parts because this is really easy to do as I tried to show you uh, a little earlier and uh, with what person will tell you tomorrow you will do it just like this in a very short time. So this is uh, important because uh, it's some hard work and it will allow us to uh, which one of our targets. So I'm not a computer file, I'm taking the discount now. And we have targets in the in the network and these are huge amounts of data that we have to provide. And for instance, uh, at the moment we only have which one of the five targets that we have. Uh, so we have the number of countries, at the moment we use two countries to have which our targets. So, including uh, one EHG institution for one country is okay, and we, have, we will not have our target. Uh, including EHG, we have uh, 105 uh, institutions at the moment in the portal, so with their EHG uh, content, and 88 institutions with EHG uh, content. Uh, but the target for the European Commission, which has uh, like uh, in, 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 uh, in a shop, you know, you have to count and you have to give precise figures to the European Commission. So we have 105 EG and we should have 300. Uh, then we have the finding aids. So the number of finding aids actually in the portal. Uh, I'm not sure because I know that some of you. Um, Approved uh, other files, so my videos are the ones from last Sunday, so it's, it's not that far away, so it should be really close to the reality. Uh, we have 100,005, no, yes, something like this, uh, finding it in the portal, and the target was 100,000, so this one is switched already. Uh, and then the two last ones. Uh, are the number of descriptive units. So this is the one that you see in the front page of the portal uh, at the moment. And this was a huge result that, that you made. Uh, it's 23.4 million descriptive units, but our target is 75 million descriptive units. But remember that uh, on the last uh, the last version of the portal, we had 40, 14.5 million of this computer. So we only uh, made 10 million more. So it's really very nice, but we still have more to provide. And the last one is uh, the amount of images. And I have a blank there about the amount of images that we are supposed to provide for the first year. Well, I know, yeah, I should know. Uh, uh, anyway, we are far away from it. <laughs> this is what I know. Maybe it's 50, uh, 50 million, I got say it first. And at the moment, we, uh, we don't have it. And if you remember, you should have received a PM from, from, from my side uh, in the mail, because for the images, uh, the only automatic counts that we have in the portal is uh, a link uh, amount and this has not 
means a lot to use uh, depending on the institution. You can have you can have a relation from one to one. So this is case from uh, for Slovenia, for instance, or for the Netherlands. Uh, one descriptive minutes equals one image, one image. But for other countries, one uh, descriptive uh, unit equals uh, one yellow uh, name, sorry, equals for, uh, 40 <coughs> images or even uh, some images. Uh, so we can't uh, just infer from uh, the number of vehicles the number of images. And what is asked for us to report to the Commission is the number of images that are linked uh, in your website from our portal. So this is why I asked you uh, this feedback. Uh, you don't need to be uh, absolutely precise to do this, really, because anyway, with such a lot of data, uh, nobody can be uh, sure that you really have this amount of, of uh, and nobody can check. I shouldn't say that. But we need to have at least an approximate figure for the image uh, that we need from our project. Uh, the, uh, the other thing I think that I was uh, rather long and clear about this uh, was to fill in the question. So for the one, uh, for, for the country that did not yet do it, please fill in the first one and fill in the second uh, once we give the top, uh, the, the start of it. Uh, this is really important, uh, again, uh, for figures, because uh, this will be, be this uh, survey and, and, and first question will be the base for uh, the report that we have to provide for the Commission. Uh, and this one will allow us to precise it, uh, the, and even amend the amount of data that we stated document work. So if you realize uh, through the survey that you've been too optimistic or too uh, pessimistic in your evaluation when you filled in this uh, document of work, of work two years ago, this is a moment. Because after this report that is due for the end of the first year, so we have until the 28th of March uh, to, to provide it, uh, this is the only moment when we can change this figure. So this is really important for, for, for the project as well. Uh, for the Ethernet, during the Ethernet project, we really, there, there were really uh, uh, people for this figure and say, okay, you didn't reach that, why and, and, and how is it, etc. So this is the moment to do it. And besides 28th of March, it's my anniversary, so it would be nice to have all Figures of this day. So now, if, if you have, Kirsten um, or Johan, if you have specific uh, steps to, to precise, please do it just now. Okay. And again, if you have uh, things to say, do you. Um, are they going to be. I realize it's only days yet, but are you going to be expected to report on usage figures at, at some point? Yes, true. But I leave this one to, to, to my uh, well, okay. to, to the, my work package seven points. <laughs> and I, I, I you don't have to pay back the, the work package five. At the moment. I don't remember. Uh, we we are supposed to have a certain amount of connections.
which is dealing with usability and um, user evaluation. And then doing reports on what they find out during the evaluation. That is the one thing. Um, the other thing is that we also have a success indicator related to a feature that we want to re implement in the future, which is mod pages. So this would be a, a password um, connected account for users where they, for instance, could um, store their services, um, gather, um, let's say, all finding aids uh, for, for their research uh, and things like this. And I think the number of that is um, 3,000 users by the end of the project. We are not our real, so um, we, we don't have this specific um, research uh, framework. So. And we are, uh, we are rather cautious also uh, when putting these people <coughs> in the report. Thank you. 